everyone and welcome to the part 3 of the neural network series. In this video I'll give you a step by step demo on how to build your own neural network using TensorFlow and we'll see how the learning and the gradient descent work along with the help of backpropagation. Now before jumping onto the code let's sum it up what all we learned in the previous sessions. Now what we learned was stochastic gradient descent which is one of the part of the working of the neural network. And we also learned about the backpropagation, which is the algorithm for determining how a single training example would like to change the weights and biases, not just in terms of whether they should go up or down, but in terms of what relative proportions to those changes cause the most rapid decrease to the cost. So let's begin with our demo. So, guys, here I'm going to use the Spider IDE, which is one of the best IDE for Python. Alternatively, you can also use the Jupyter Notebook or the Python shell to execute the same. So let's begin our demo. So first of all, what we are going to do is import all the necessary libraries and the data sets. So here we are importing the MNIST data set, which contains around 60K of training data as well as 10K of testing data. All the data is in the format of images of 28 by 28 pixels. So one important thing to note here is that TensorFlow by default contains the MNIST data. So we are importing this data from TensorFlow itself. So let's execute this. So what it'll do, it'll connect to the TensorFlow repository and from that it will take out the examples, tutorials and the MNIST data. Now once the import is complete, next what we are going to do is import TensorFlow and matplotlib. As these will help us to plot the graph and know more about the learning rate, the backpropagation, the epochs involved, all of that. So, as you can see here, it shows an warning that TensorFlow has to have important but unused. We are going to use it later in this demo. No need to worry about that. So, once the import is complete, next what we are going to do is initialize all the different parameters. So, first of all, we'll be initializing the learning rate. And now we have taken learning rate as the standard 0.001. As shifting this learning rate would have a great impact on the amount of time taken for the program to execute because if there's a change in the learning rate, if there's a high learning rate, it might take us ages to compute what's been computed in just within minutes. So the training epochs is 15 because we are taking here the 15 number of cycles as in how many numbers of iterations it's going to take for us to reach out to our final result. The batch size we have given as 100, so it will take 100 images or the 128 cross 28 images of the digits. And the display step is one. So this means that at every step, or I should say every epoch, it will display what's the current condition of the program. Now, after initializing the parameters, it's time for us to initialize the network parameters. So, first of all, I'm initializing the number of features in the first hidden layer, which is 256, and similarly, I'll initialize the number of features in the second hidden layer that will be 256 as well. Remember guys in the earlier videos I told you that we have only two hidden layers with 16 neurons because that was for easy calculation and part but in reality we use a large number of feature list in the hidden layers. It all depends upon the example which we are using. So similarly I have initialized the number of features in the hidden layer as 256 as well. Now number of inputs is 784 as I mentioned earlier. The images are 28 cross 28 pixels, so that gives us a total of 784. That is the standard size of the MNIST dataset. So the number of classes here we have defined as 10. So these 10 classes corresponds to all the digits in the output, which is 0 to 9. So let me run this code here. Now, once all these parameters and the network parameters are initialized, it's time for us to move forward to the TF graph input. So here we have initialized X and Y, which are float variables and the TF graph inputs. So X will take the number of inputs and Y is the number of classes here. So let's run this too. Now after this, what we are going to do is create our model. So as you can see, we have defined the multi-layer perceptron here, which will take the inputs X and it will also take the weights and biases. So next, what we are going to define are the hidden layers. We have two hidden layers. We are also going to use the ReLU function here to minimize the cost because as I mentioned earlier, the cost value might range from minus infinity to plus infinity depending upon the values it is generating. But for this example, we want our value to be between 0 and 1. So we are going to use a compression function of ReLU here. 
similarly we are also defining the same for layer 2 as well and for layer 3 we are using a linear activation we are not compressing any value here for the output layer so let me just run this too so next what we are going to do is store the weights and biases so for that we are creating h1 h2 and output weights and the same we are going to create for biases as well we have used the tf dot variable which is the standard use of tensorflow here now next what we are going to do is construct the prediction model so our prediction is a multi-layer perceptron with x as the number of inputs and weights and biases also as the parameters let me run this too now here we come to the most important part of this code which is the calculating the loss and also using the back gradient which we discussed earlier so we have defined cost here as tf dot reduce mean we are using the softmax cross entropy with logistics and for logics we are using the prediction model which we created and for the labels we are going to use y now what was y if we go earlier we look at why it holds the number of classes 0 to 9 which are the output layers and then we have initialized the optimizer here now this is using the tf.train atom optimizer with learning rate provided as 0.001 and its ultimate goal is to minimize the cost now how it will minimize the cost is based upon the back propagation which i just mentioned earlier the value it generates and the value it gets in the first try it will take that value and see what all nudges it can make to the weights the biases so that the final output is in our favor so let's run this also so another thing which we are going to do is initialize the global variables now next what we are going to do is create list which will store the cost history as well as the accuracy history because this is what we are going to feed back into the neural network and which will again make all the changes to the weights and biases and we also need the accuracy history so as to increase the accuracy our ultimate goal increase the accuracy and decrease the cost that is the main goal so next what we are going to do is finally launch the graph and the session here we have defined the training cycle for epoch in range and next what we are going to do is loop this over all the batches we have here so because as i mentioned earlier the data set is so huge computing everything at once doesn't make sense so what we do instead is use the batches to compute the result and based on that output we make the changes to all the other inputs which are coming forward in the batch size next what we are going to do here is uh, run the optimizer which is the back propagation and the cost operation so as to get all the values of the cost and finally we are going to compute the average cost here so that will be done by dividing the total cost by the number of total batches here we have so next what we are going to do is display loss at every epoch step as i showed you earlier that the display step is one so after every epoch it's going to show us what is the loss value and the accuracy value and here what we are doing is calculating the correct prediction and the accuracy involved here as you can see here we are using the accuracy underscore history dot append to the accuracy temp so what it'll do is the moment you calculate the accuracy at suppose nth step what it'll do is take the accuracy and append it to the accuracy history the list we created earlier so that the neural network could have an idea that it's moving towards the right direction if the accuracy is getting low then we are not reaching the local minima here so that that will minimize the cost function our ultimate goal is to minimize the average cost so it needs to keep a track of the accuracy itself similarly we are also appending the cost history here so after optimization is finished we are going to plot the cost history and accuracy history just to show how the neural network behaved here so let me run this whole session there was some syntax error i guess because of the brackets involved so i've corrected that let's see what's the output here so as you can see we have the first epoch the cost is 147 we have the second epoch where the cost has reduced massively to 36 as you can see the accuracy started from 0.85 now it has reached 19 in the fourth epoch and cost has reduced to 15. so what this code is doing is it is taking the cost and the accuracy and according to that it's making all the changes to the weights and biases in the whole network reducing the cost and increasing the accuracy is our main goal so now we have reached the 10th epoch and you can see the cost has reduced to 2.4 while the accuracy is 9.37 our ultimate goal of our neural network should be to get the cost to as low as possible 
to zero if possible that's the best case so guys as you can see here the final cost at the 15th epoch is 0 0.6 we started from 147 and came back all the way to 0 0.63 so as you can see here we started at 147 here and we have reached 0 0.63 Talking about accuracy, we started from 0.85 and we have reached 0.94. That is a pretty good accuracy. So guys, I hope you got an idea of how neural network works, what are the coding required using the TensorFlow. It's so easy to manipulate and use the neural networks to our advantage. The whole concepts of weights and biases, the backpropagation, how it adjusts all the weights, the biases to make our output even more desirable to even more close to our expected output thank you guys i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning